Why is there a tombstone with a cheese dip recipe in the middle of Iowa? Who's buried there? Why cheese dip? <laughs> you see my friends in the car. Are there other graves that have recipes? Those are the questions I have today. But first, I have to get here. We are on our way to the airport to go to Iowa. We're going to a graveyard to eat some cheese. Um, I mean, maybe I should start with why. That's like the first question that comes up in my head. In the middle of Iowa, in the Dow City Cemetery, there's a tombstone with a recipe for cheese dip. Like the recipes on the gravestone. The grave belongs to Deb Nelson, a Dow City native, and etched on the back are instructions for how to make something called Red Lantern Cheese Dip. And this grave isn't the only one. Archivist Rosie Grant, aka Ghostly Archives, has discovered over 30 graves across the country, each with their own personalized recipe. I mean, if you put a recipe on your tombstone, it's better, it better be really good. Mm -hmm. And simple. How big is this tombstone? And it has to be timeless. You can't put in like, oh, get this like Trader Joe's, you know, <laughs> specific recipe. She's made it her mission to visit all of them, learning their story and bringing their recipe to the sites. It immediately piqued my interest. I reached out to her and she said she was down. And she's gonna be in the car in like a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, we're six minutes away from her house. Yeah, wow. So nice to meet you in person. It's so nice to meet you in person. Oh, oh my God, my this goodness. is gonna be a journey. It's gonna be so fun. <laughs> How's it going, I'm Jen. I am Rosie Grant, and I find recipes on gravestones and cook them. So where are we going? We are going to visit a woman named Deb Nelson, who has a amazing cheese dip recipe on her gravestone. You can eat cheese, right? I'm severely allergic to dairy. Well, this is gonna be great. <laughs> Say goodbye to Jack. See you all next week. Uh, have a nice flight. Let's go to Iowa. Snack check. Can I see the yeah. bug? Oh, so this is just pencils about gravestones. <laughs> pencils? After sharing goodies we packed for the flight, it was time for adventure. So uh, we just got notification our flight is delayed, uh, which means we're not gonna get into Denver in time to make our flight to Sioux City, Iowa. When I went downstairs, there was an option it gave me that we fly through Chicago. It's gonna be a hell of a cheese dip. Yeah. And then booked a new flight to Chicago to then transfer to Sioux City the next morning. After 12 hours of Lux accommodations, Group three, we're ready to board Group three. It was finally time for Iowa. That was snow. The Sioux City Airport was pretty bustling for a Tuesday. The woman who runs the rental car company went home early, but she left us a handwritten note. Look at so many happy faces. Oh my god. Oh no. no. Oh wow, Sioux City, beautiful city. Uh, uh, happy to be here. S straight up manure. Yeah. Oh my god. So and there's cold. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, this is why we moved to California. We're such loops. <laughs> I can see my breath in the car. You see my breath in the car? <laughs> they don't work. They're too cold. <laughs> it's cold. It's windy. It's a perfect day to go to a cemetery. So Deb is the woman whose grave we are visiting. Mm -hmm. uh, Deb has this famous cheese dip recipe. And her daughter Kate is coming to town. She's going to help us cook. So like... The idea of summing up your life on a tombstone, even an obituary, it, it does sound intimidating to me. Right? Because like, here lies Zach, he tried stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly interning at a cemetery made me realize how taboo death is, especially in the US and Western culture. Like, I've gotten some of the most negative comments that I'll get 
on my TikTok or on my Instagram or like just people will email in as just being like, I don't think you should go visit cemeteries. There's something wrong about it. <laughs> a phrase that I keep thinking about with this project is you die two times. You die when you actually die and then you die uh, the last time someone says your name. And like, like, like Coco. Yeah, exactly. People put the thought and effort to a public memorial and to not you know, take the time to go visit someone who has that out there. All this talk about death and gravestones got me thinking about legacy. Deb Nelson decided her legacy would be a single recipe. Why a recipe? Why cheese dip? Do I have a legacy? I mean, I'm just some guy that took my pants off on the internet for laughs, and now... The idea of boiling my life down to one singular thing that I could put on a gravestone. Was I living a life worthy of a legacy? I'm really excited to meet Cake. We, we have been talking back and forth for months now. Basically, I first met her when she reached out saying like, oh, like I saw this Graves Recipes thing on BuzzFeed. I'm sorry, BuzzFeed is how you got famous. We rented an Airbnb in Dunlap one town over and settled in for the night. Oh, we're friends. I was starting to get a taste for Iowa, but my mind turned to Deb Nelson. You know, who was she? What was her life like here? Oh, they're beautiful. If I were a ghost, this is exactly where I'd haunt. <laughs> the next morning, we met up with Deb's daughter, Kate. She agreed to spend the day with us and show us around town. My name is Kate Griffith. No simple way to say this. Your mom has a weird tombstone. Yes, yes, my mom definitely has a weird tombstone. When you're in Iowa, you gotta stop by Crocs. Crocs, 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 Crocs. As I learned about life here, I couldn't help but notice that death was everywhere. I was amazed by the clock on it, and then I realized it's a funeral home. Wait, this is also a funeral home? I've, we've walked by two, and we drove by the tombstone maker. Yeah. Like, is it just more pronounced here? I feel like a lot of them, you might drive by it, and you and think don't it's, know that it's exactly, a yeah. You'll think it's like a bank or something. Yeah. I, okay, maybe I'm just the only one that's that's wowed by the the dueling funeral homes next to each other. Located next to the Scooters Coffee drive-through is Carlisle Memorial, and if anyone could tell me about Deb's tombstone, it would be them. I am Angie Carlisle, and this is Carlisle Memorials. We are a family-owned business, in business since 1929. Oh, wow. Um, my husband's grandfather started the business. So This is, this one is insane. Cool. This Isn't is gorgeous. Cool? So this would yours? be intended uh, Yeah, to, I want this one. I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> this one could be a, like a family, like a four-person, theoretically. Nah, I want it all to myself. If everybody had the same last name, that would go here, and then you could, in theory, stay four names. We keep these severely outdated calendars <laughs> up here. Oh, these are great. Just to give people, again, ideas on what is available. And so, you know, I typically will tell people, start first by kind of determining the color that you want of granite, and then the size, and then the shape. Oh, wow. You know, you can, this is a severely outdated uh, photo of my daughter, which I'm sure Kate would yep. recognize oh from about Oh my gosh, I was about to grade. say, who was she? Yes, no, it's, it's, it's just my daughter, just a sample. How's um, your daughter feel about having a, a fake grave? <laughs> you know, fortunately, she's 34. She, she's got two little kids to worry about. That's the last thing on her mind, so. Outside the shop is a showroom of sorts, a fake cemetery with sample graves to explore. I don't assume that I'm gonna get a, a memorial. It's not something that I assumed that I would get. But that's because I assume I won't get buried. Okay, sure, fair But enough. I wanna know if I were to get one, what would it be? Okay, well, would it be just for you? Do you have a significant other? I do, I am married. Okay. I, 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 I guess so I would share. The only reason I ask is, so that- I kinda impacts, don't wanna share, right? I kinda want my own. So that impacts how big of a stone you I want. See. So, you know- So something like this could fit the both of that us. That would be for two people. Yep. One and two. Yep. Is there a certain color that appeals to you? Do you like earth tones? Do you like sleek? What do you think looks best with my complexion? 
<laughs> this is so pretty, this kind. Isn't that cool? Like the, the red speckly. Yeah. I thought this would spin. It does spin. It does. It does spin. It takes a little work, oh. yeah. If you had four kids, you could put four portraits on there. So yeah, if you were really um, egotistical, you could put four photos, photos of, of myself. Yourself. That sounds like something I would do. I so, like that. So yeah, so the sky's the limit. I wait, I love this one. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's so, it's so. It's so odd. <laughs> Have you heard about Booba and Kiki? Booba and Kiki. Do you know this? There's two types of shapes, Booba and Kiki. What do you think this is? This would be a Booba to me. That's a Booba. Uh, <laughs> if I had to guess. Yeah. And then uh, if you saw something all spiky. So that could be a Kiki? It's Kiki. How much uh, does this go for? Yeah, maybe 4,000. Okay. What do you think? What about you, Rachel? Is there one here that's catching your eye? Well, you can't, that's mine, back off. <laughs> <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. No! <laughs> oh, nice, you got the booba. <laughs> One of these is the stone type that, that Deb Nelson chose. This, this color right or here. Or that you chose. Yep. This one right here. Yep. Oh, this is so pretty. That's the Bahama blue. Bahama blue. When you're in a community and you're like, putting together the memorials for friends and for family and stuff yes. like that. I guess just part of the industry. It is part of the industry. You know, I've had to do it for friends. I've had to do it for friends' children. Um, it's, it's a mixed blessing. It's, you know, obviously very hard, but it's kind of like one last gift that you can do for somebody. This was kind of a unique one in the sense that not only, you know, from, from the business standpoint, but just because Deb had been such a good friend. She, on countless occasions, would gift my husband and I some of this Red Lantern dip. And everybody had a knockoff of this recipe. Everybody <laughs> had, including my mother, had one that was the Red Lantern dip. So we're gonna be making Red Lantern Cheese Dip. The Red Lantern. Red Lantern Cheese Dip. So the Red Lantern Cheese Dip is from a steakhouse that my mom worked at, and my dad went there almost every day for lunch. My mom kind of made it known to the other servers there that she was to wait on my dad and only my dad. My mom had always made this cheese dip, and she would package it up for Christmas and gifts and stuff for people but would always keep the recipe a secret. People would ask her for it and she would always say, no, nope, it'll be on my tombstone when I die. And then when we lost my mom a few years ago, we all thought, oh crap, we kind of have to put this recipe on our tombstone. So if we're gonna cook like my mom, Deb Nelson, you must wear an apron and you must have a dish towel over your shoulder at all times. Does it matter left or right? No. Okay. Wait, this, I've never seen bacon bits in this kind of container, and it almost looks like spices. Yeah, kind of. yeah. it's not, there's no bacon actually in it. The yeah. most important one. Most important, the cheese spread. And not just any, it's the Merck's cheese Merck's. spread. So the cheese dip recipe, she had written on the lid of the brand of cheese dip that she buys, so she can remember what brand it is that she needs to buy. That's it, in your hand, that in is In my hand, this recipe. is the recipe. Cheese in the mixer. Okay. Look at that. This is... <laughs> Even before she passed, I always told her, I'm like, I want this recipe book of yours. It's almost a scrapbook of all these recipes that she had collected over the years. She was notorious for cutting out, like, the Pillsbury box with the recipe on it, or writing a recipe down on a piece of cardboard from the package that she bought it from. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, we don't even need a spoon, you got it. <laughs> Going back to the Play-Doh feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm having a good time. How much sour cream are we rocking in this? So you can either do a quarter cup or two heaping tablespoons. Two heaping, and, and this was with love? Mm, mm -hmm. You measure with your heart. Is that love? Too, too much love. Too much love. Too much love. I think probably my favorite part about all of her collection of recipes is the ones that she got from all of her friends. Mm. Like, apparently a really good creamy dried beef dip that my mom thought was good enough to keep the recipe. Ooh. And those are handwritten? Okay, all handwritten. All right, now two heaping of mayonnaise. Heaping. That might be a little too heaping. God, I'm too, I- You're just so much you, love. You said the love thing and I'm like, yeah, I wanna. <laughs> yeah. Mad scientist with it. Our minced onion, half a teaspoon garlic powder. Now we whip. Whip. When she would bring it to us at Christmas time along with a little package of crackers or something, I would be like, can, you, can I have the recipe? <laughs> and she'd be like, Ange, the only time you're gonna get that recipe is when it's on my tombstone. <laughs> and then also, if you could make it yourself, it wouldn't be special. And I thought, mm. that's brilliant. You know, she's right. I mean, it was just something we looked forward to and it was special because we got it once a year. 
And just like that. Oh my like goodness. That. That's like the color of a sunset, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the best sunset. Yeah. We traveled, we explored, we made cheese dip. The only thing left was to meet Deb. Cemetery. Yay! So my mom and then my grandma and then my grandma's mom. Wow. Three gens. Three yeah, generations. So this is my grandma. I love the heart behind her stone. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of a public memorial to someone who might not have that otherwise. Like mm. that's essentially the archive of their life. An archive of life. Mm. It's like a graveyard, it's like a library of people. Yeah. So my mom's right up here. Oh, wow. So when we were picking out a spot for Amazing. her, we're like, she has to be like front row center, obviously. Of course. So. Yeah. All right, so I've got a couple of pictures. First place and then open class special award. Oh my God. <laughs> so that's her with her ribbons. We were always kind of open about the concept of death and dying. Every year, the Dow City Cemetery has um, a Memorial Day really well put together. I mean, small towns do these kind of things great. My mom always had to make sure that everybody had flowers for Memorial Day. We always had to kind of walk the entire cemetery and see the people that she went to high school with, that she was friends with, and had a story about this person here and a story about this person here. And it was always just an experience. And I think that kind of helped deter that stigma of, oh, this is a cemetery, it should be scary or sad or anything. And it was always just kind of a fun little trip for us. <laughs> Some questions I have I have being here, the shape of the, the mm -hmm. stone is quite, Unusual. I mean, yeah. Yeah. What's going on there? We just liked it. <laughs> yeah. Question number two. <laughs> I'm noticing right the here, picture there. Yeah. there's a little uh, little beach lounger. Yeah. I think my dad took this picture when they were on vacation. Stop it. That's yeah. a photo he took. Oh, I'm no way. Sure. Yeah. I think he's got it framed at his house, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Because they like to travel together, yeah. right? Hi, Deb. I'm Hi, Zach. Deb. Hi, Deb. This is Rachel. Hey, Ma. Thank this you. This is Rosie. So nice to meet you. Uh, I wouldn't really say we're friends of your daughters, but we, we, we know be. your daughter. Yeah. And maybe someday <laughs> we'll be friends. She invited us here to try your dip. Um, not sure if you're, you were a YouTube fan. She did like Rocker. celebrity chefs. She loved Food Network. Um, loved Guy Fieri with a passion. So I have this picture of her dressed as Guy Fieri for Halloween. Oh. My mom and I went and saw him at the Orpheum Theater in Sioux City, and somehow she weaseled her way backstage and got to meet him. Deb was the biggest Halloween fan, and every year you couldn't wait to see what her costume was gonna be. She dressed up as Facebook one year, because she lo loved Facebook. That was the year after Guy Fieri, and they wouldn't let her win two years in a row, so <laughs> she didn't get a win that year. Oh my but. God. So the question you've probably been asking yourself this whole video, how does it taste? Cheers. All right, cheers. Thank you. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Deb. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay, Deb. Okay, Deb. <laughs> No, it totally tastes like someone's holiday party. It does. It does taste like a holiday party. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have this picture of my mom and I on like the log ride. Just the look of joy on both of our faces is like the best thing in the world. How do you feel about people watching this, uh, trying to make this? I love it. I love it. And my mom would think it was cool too. Yeah. Like she'd geek out about it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. she's now like a famous food star, which is really cool. It's like all she's ever wanted. <laughs> Something I've been thinking about a lot, you know, with, with your mom, is this idea of, of legacy. How do you want to be remembered? What does it mean to be remembered? I think my mom left a really good imprint on anybody that she met was a friend to her. Even if you cross paths in the grocery store or in the parking lot somewhere, like spend time with them and really like hear their story because you never know what people are going through. They might just need someone kind to talk to them one day. In my mind, a legacy was what you print on your tombstone, but mm -hmm. actually that's fairly incidental to the day-to-day -day interactions you have with people. I think a legacy is more about who you were and what you gave and the memories that you're leaving people is, is your legacy. I think the biggest thing is like, at the time she probably didn't think she was 
important like that to people. Like, I wish that she would have been able to see like, all these people showed up for her. What does it mean to live a life well lived? What defines your legacy and how are we remembered when we're gone? The answer is reflected in the archive, but it's felt in the day to day, in the people who surround you and the life you lead. And you may find your legacy impacts people in ways you'd never expect. Like a complete stranger standing in the cold in the middle of Iowa, eating your favorite recipe.